to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. And joining us from the University of Newcastle is Head of School of Education for our regular chat, John Fischetti. Good morning, John. Good morning, Meryl. We were just uh, talking about Dr Brendan Nelson and mentioning the paradox of the Australian War Memorial and as he said in that chat with me earlier, it is very much called the Australian War Memorial and whilst it's said in the context of war, it is the paradox of love and friendship. I thought that was such a powerful message, John, and it sort of almost flows over into what we're talking about with education and the paradox of kids today who may be struggling, but there are so many opportunities and ways for them not to have to struggle. Exactly. You know, the, the notion of the of freedom isn't free, and the shoulders we stand on of all of those who have come before, many of whom who have lost their lives to protect that freedom, some in conflict that we question retroactively, but all heroes nonetheless in the 11th hour, the 11th day, pretty special moment in time to mm. try to see if this could be the war to end our wars. and. Of course, 100 years later, it hasn't been. No, we'll, we'll mark that today here at 2NURFM with a, a minute's silence as well. Let's talk about teenagers who aren't strong with reading, writing and arithmetic. How do we, once they get to those teenage years, how do they get through school or, or do they not? So in my role, it's always easiest to talk about young children because we can get it right for them and a generation later see if it's worked. But what about the year seven, eight, nine students who are reading at the f year four and five level? What about the students who are still counting on their fingers in examinations mm. in year nine and year 10, uh, who are disenfranchised saying, I don't like math or I don't read. And so that's really where the challenge happens that doesn't seem easy. The cup looks not half full for teachers. The countries that seem to be doing better than Australia and the teachers in Australia that seem to be doing better than others don't give up on children. And what they do is they modify their curriculum to meet their needs. And there's several specific ways you can do that that schools that are getting it right have figured out. If you read below grade level, and you know many, many of your children's friends may be in that situation. First of all, children are spending 3.2 hours a day on text messaging, Facebook messaging, and online social networking. Well, that's 3.2 hours on average that we could get back because in our day, that might be the time we were reading a thing we used to call a book, mm. or we were engaging in intellectual conversation. It might have been over something not academic, but it was a discourse. We need to claim that space back, and there's ways to use the online tools to do that. So if you know your child is gonna spend an hour doing that, they could be doing research to find three references that describe the impact of climate change, or on Australian history, or on the roots of your family and genealogy. You could interview family members. You can build literacy skills in and around the time where they might be doing those distracting things. It's about uh, getting them G'd up for it too, isn't it? En engaged and, and juiced about what they are interested in. Because if you can get right. them using, using the technology uh, to find something interesting, then that's, I mean, my little one who's 11, she's obsessed with space mm -hmm. and space travel and the planets. And she just chews through the internet like there's no one's business because she's watching things or she's reading stuff. And we found that if we encourage her to do that, rather than saying, get off that computer, no more. Um, we'll say, okay, there's a time limit. Why don't you look up some space things? Yeah, use it as yeah. the tool for learning. The y young people today, like your child, are watching more than reading. We read to watch, mm -hmm. they watch to read, but they don't get to the reading unless we build in that component. Many teachers aren't aware that are teaching in like history, that there are history texts written at the year six, year seven level but they're about the curriculum at year nine and year 10, so they don't dumb it down. They make the literacy skills to the students so they can still master the concepts. But, cause, but too much happens. Those children are labeled as weak readers. They're put in slower level courses. They're sort of dumbed down to, and that's where we lose them. Tutoring is also one of those things that makes up for those gaps if we find the right mentoring match for a tutor. So those schools that have gone to individualized, personalized instruction, or those families that can afford those resources, actually can close the gap between those students who are on track and those that are not. So we really do have to get those students individual help, not hold them back. Holding back actually does a counterproductive social process for kids okay. where they're, they're disadvantaged because they're really not moving forward. And they know uh, that could, themselves, don't they? They can tell. Then know. the gap gets wider, yeah. and that's where we lose them from school. Then programs such as Big Picture Australia 
and project-based learning. There's lots of alternative kind of 21st century learning models that are popping up in individual schools that are actually turning the learning into active, but they're focusing on the literacy, literacy skills embedded in it. So we're not just doing a web idea. We're actually deliberately doing a literacy assignment using the tools we were talking about earlier. What was that website that you just mentioned then, something Australia? Because I know Big people- Picture Australia is actually a school model that we have in the Hunter. We have two models right here in Newcastle and all around Australia that for kids that are actually leaving school or dropping in, I call them the drop in or the drop out, they bring them back to school and start with a work integrated learning assignment. Because young people who feel tuned out to their future, they go to a work environment, they now see why they need to do better in their academic content. So they blend the work they have to leave to learn is the concept mm. of the authors yeah. of that model. That's interesting. John Fischetti, always a pleasure to talk to you. And we can't give up on those kids that are a little bit older that maybe didn't, for whatever reason, pick it up along the way. We have to, you know, engage with them, try and find out what they love and interested in and be, use the technology that they love yeah. to get them back on track. And remember, everyone has to be successful. There's nothing to do if you're not well-educated right now. And that's only going to grow clearer and stronger in the future. Everybody has to be well-educated. He joins us every other Wednesday. It is John Fischetti from the University of Newcastle's School of Education.